Hi all, welcome to Night Rips. So today's opening, we are going to jump right into the heart of the, what was known as the Junk Wax Era, 1990, with this set of Upper Deck 1990 Edition Baseball. Before we open this up, let's do a little bit of background. So 1990 was the second year that Upper Deck produced baseball cards, produced any cards. They actually started in 1988, but this year was very pivotal. In 1990, they initially had come out with the first 700 cards in, you know, the standard boxes we're used to, a 36-pack, 15-card, uh, no gum in these. But then they came out with the second set, the upper, uh, the high number series. Two ways it came out. You could either got it this way. This is a factory sealed. It came with cards number 701 to 800. Or you could got just like the low series where you got 36 packs, 15 cards each, but those packs contained cards from 1 to 800. You can get the entire set that way. Now, while this is so pivotal, there was a set of inserts that were in these cards. That's There was a 10-card insert by Reggie Jackson. Reggie was actually helping Upper Deck at the time. So they created this 10-card set, and in one of the cards... Uh, 2,500 of them to be exact, Reggie actually on card signed and hand numbered those cards and they were randomly inserted in packs. This is the first time that this kind of autographed card in packs ever occurred. And if it wasn't for things like that, things like my Ronald Acuna Jr. on card auto out of 50 wouldn't happen. Get well, Ronald. So... These were massively overdue. That's why, you know, even with 2,500 autos, it's real rare to be able to pull a Reggie Jackson auto. And there's a, still a ton of this on the market. Now, the one thing that you'll find, you can go to eBay, Amazon, you name it, and you can find these packs for roughly 8 to 12 bucks. The wax packs, yes, there's a lot of them that still contain Reggie Jackson autographs. But this pack here doesn't. So if you actually find, uh, you know, auctions that mention, you know, find the Reggie, understand it's not in these that are marked high number series. It's only in the wax packs. So, you know, be very cautious about that. There's also, these were cards that were notoriously filled with errors. There's actually some fun ones. A lot of them are in the lower numbers, you know, lower than 700 or lower than 701. There was some errors that were found in 701 Up, and when I open this, I've opened these packs before. I've never found errors in these, but I'll point out where some of those errors could be or what to look for, especially if you get the wax packs. And then finally, I mentioned the wax packs, the errors, the Reggie, whatnot. Make sure to go ahead and click that button, click on that subscribe, because I do have a surprise at the end of this video, so... You know, watch it to the end and you'll find out what that is. So with that being said, let's go ahead and open this up. And you see, this one still has its Upper Deck logo. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up a little bit. I still like to keep the cello on them just so you can, they don't slide out. And again, you see on here, what does this contain? You do get you do get a few of the team holograms. I guess it was kind of cool in the late '80s, early '90s. Um, these does contain the entire upper set, the 701-800. Talks about the newest rookie cards and traded players. There is one rookie in particular I'll point out that is a nice one to have. Not really worth that much. Much like must much of the uh, junk wax era, they so overproduce these cards that. Unless you have a PSA 10, I mean, even the in 1989 when Upper Deck, you know, their card number one was, uh, even though this is a Fleer one, the Ken Griffey Jr., that one has to be a PSA 10 in order to be worth really anything. So let's set this out. And of course, put the box over here. Let's take a look, see what, see what holograms we got. Okay. Then we got the 
Cincinnati Reds guy. That's kind of cool. Actually, this this one actually looks pretty good too. They have the St. Louis Cardinals. Actually, it, and for cards that are 31 years old, actually these are pretty good. Ah, at the time it was the California Angels, not the Anaheim Angels, but that's kind of cool. See California in the baseball there. And of course, and I've, I've got one of these before. The Detroit Tigers. Nice, nice how the tiger does kind of pop out a little bit. So, but those are fun. And you always get four of these and these. But let's go ahead and take a look at the cards. Now, one thing I, you'll notice, and boy, this is a, a setback, is you look, of course, you've got your upper deck checklist, 701-800. And with these cards, one thing that Upper Deck was trying to do, because if you looked at, you remember like the old, this is a Topps uh, 1996. These are extremely easy to counterfeit because it's just on cardstock, right? What Upper Deck did is they added this hologram feature here. I hope you can see it. Uh, that supposedly kept people from counterfeiting and this was actually embedded in the card it's not like a sticker on it but you know I don't know how many people really want to counterfeit something if you know you print bazillions oh uh, let's go ahead and see take, take a look and these are cards and I one thing I will say about the upper deck set these cards compared to previous cards I mean some Don Russes are nice you know I've, I've I am a big tops guy, so I, I always like those. But these cards are beautiful. A lot of the things that, you know, one of my favorite sets is Top Stadium Club. And I love it because of the photography on it. And a lot of that came because companies like Upper Deck, you know, once Topps Monopoly was broke, you know, there was no longer an exclusive rights, it got other people into the, into the game and really push the envelope a bit so you know upper deck gorgeous card the other thing about an upper deck card is that it had a photo photograph on the front and the back and again you know you got the hologram and tag counterfeiting thing here uh, but yeah you you actually had full color cards both front and back gorgeous one thing I want to show, and this is something you, if you do get a chance to open up wax packs of some of the upper deck stuff, one of the things that actually makes their cards a little bit more valuable are the errors. And one of the errors that you will find is, if you notice under the MLB logo here, this copyright, a lot of times either the copyright is missing or it's only half there. Those are worth more, but when you talk about worth, again, PSA 10 and it uh it's still only worth maybe $20 not you're not gonna not gonna really put your kids through college selling these cards unless you got tons of them so, so you got Chris James Jenny Myers Sam Horn uh, one Samuel Brian Smith another thing I'm looking for if you notice the right here in this little gray square is the position. Um, there, one of the errors that that is common is that sometimes these are upside down, or you know this one's pretty pretty well centered. Sometimes they'll be far left justified, far right justified. Of course, you know, anytime you've got any errors like that, it's worth more if you want to call you know a few bucks worth something. Now this one's a little bit. Far left center, Kevin Bass, Craig Lefert, uh, Craig Lefertz. It's a little, uh, little to the left. It's Huey Brooks, That's a good player. Oh, looky here. This is honestly something that, that is common in Upper Deck. It's the first time I've seen it in one of these packs where the pack was actually upside down or the cards upside down. Get used to when you're opening Upper Upper Deck, the early ones. Cards were all all kinds of you know, all over the place. So 
you get you get used to flipping cards and just because a card might be backwards like this i know we get used to today when you open a pack and you see it backwards you're like oh it's gonna be a great hit Nah, not necessarily when you're talking upper deck uh, jeff Houston, it's left justified matt young's pretty good cecil fielder another great player Dave Hollins, Paul Sorrento, Mark Langston, Billy Joe Rubidoux, Mike Marshall. Oh, there we go again. This makes me wonder. Nope, oh, still looks fine. Candy Maldonado, Marty Clary. Oh, you see it's to the left a bit. Billy Hatcher, this one's pretty far. This one actually is really, uh, make sure you can see it. This one's really far to the left. Let's take a look at the... Ah, Keith Hernandez. This is actually when he went to the Indians. This is after he has stayed with the Mets. Okay. Glenn Allen Hill. Rafael Valdez. Gary Carter. Giant is again after the Mets. And you can see catcher way to the left. Quality control was just not a thing back then. Not when you were producing this many cards. Uh, Mel Rojas, Fred Lynn. Yep, here we go again. Gary Pettis. Pascal Perez. I remember Pascal. Atlanta Brave. Tony Phillips. Mike Lowers. Uh, Dave Parker. This actually was one of my heroes growing up. I remember watching him as a pirate. See, they only put a few years as a post pirate days he probably doesn't want to remember his pirate days from the mid 80s the little trouble that the pirates got in wilson alvarez position way off center but he is it is there mike pina matt combs wayne edwards oh this one's centering is off too you can see it's almost cut off at the bottom gary De Sarcina. Boy, I'm terrible at names, so if, if any of y'all are watching this, I am sorry. Jim Presley. Stan Bellina. Nat Nick. Oh. <laughs> Having the two bats, like playing MLB The Show, when you usually see him play with two bats. Alex Sanchez. Sandy Alomar Jr., uh, pod, former Padre. Yep. Ray Langford. Joe Carter, Howard Farmer. Well, I remember the old Expo days. Now the Nationals. Eric Gunderson. Alex Cole. Mike Benjamin. Ah, Dennis Boyle. Uh, oil can. The funny thing is, they did, I mean, he. they actually didn't put, and I honestly could remember oil can's first name before i had to go back and and google it but yeah they were real good at making sure that people's nicknames were on here tody pena former pirate yep Dan how it delino de shields dave renfield former yankee yeah actually this was right after he left the yankees I used to watch him. Matt Noakes. Mark Garner. Mike Fetters. Hector Valenueva. And we spin again. If anyone's getting dizzy, I apologize. Joe Kramer. Scott Sanderson. Greg Smith. Carlos Bayerga. Oh, it feels kind of thick. It's not. Oh, rookie card if he ever did anything I guess gotta go to Google uh, Derek May I guess if I have to ask he probably didn't John Burkett Nolan Ryan now this card is actually one of those cards that does get a lot of errors and I'm not talking about the fact that it's not the pitcher uh, it's not centered enough he's not centered so one of the things that happen on a lot of the cards is that you'll hear stripe no stripe 
And if you see, you know, he's got this 300, he has 300 win on July 31st in 1990. The card that's actually more valuable is when this stripe is gone. So there was batches that was printed before they actually put the stripe. But what's real funny about this card is it actually in the back doesn't even talk about his 300th win. It talks about his sixth no hitter. So you'd think it, they, would, they would have mentioned it, but I guess all they did because it came so late is they dropped the, the, logo, the stripe on it and called it a day. But his sixth no header actually happened just a few weeks prior. So go figure. Uh, ooh, Terry Strumpet. Look at look how bad. Just way, way off. Rick Parker. It's like every one of these is way off. Brian Bohannon. And spin again. Mitch Webster. Jeff Reardon, Lenny Webster, Scott Hemmen, Todd Hunley, Scott Radinsky, Bill Sampin, Jim Leritz, Sean Bosky, Greg Graybeck. There's another longtime player. John Candelera. Yeah, he had bounced around for a bit. Gotta love the pictures on the back. Peter Bryan. Greg Myers. Tim Le Leana. Jose Nunez. Kevin Beers. Glenn Braggs. Scott Ruskin. Yeah, it's starting to fade off again. Storm Davis. Yeah, you just compare. How off these are starting to get. That's some 80s hair right there. There's the big... That, this is the big rookie that you tend to watch for. David Justice. Former husband of Halle Berry. Uh, obviously a former Atlanta Brave. He was actually in the Braves Hall of Fame. Uh, One-time MVP. Rookie of the Year. Uh, good player. Got a total of one uh, vote for Hall of Fame. And... Never got to another chance. That's that's the problem with the 80s and 90s. Is the, the whole pet issue. But great player. You can tell I'm what team I'm root for. Mark Davis. John Franco, yet another great player. And it was Reds for years. Now and then he, I don't know if he actually ended with the Mets. This is about the time I was not watching baseball as much. Gerald Perry. Another Brave. Chuck McElroy. Tim Leary. Willie Randolph. Alejandro Pena. Okay. The next card is a, another a replacement card. So they actually put uh, this card. It's number 702. Um in a lot of the wax packs and they thought they got most of them but there is a mike witt card and mike witt while the front of the card and he was if i remember correctly he was a pitcher for the royals uh, front of the card was fine but when you would actually turn it in the back and i'll show you like here um you know there was a actually it was exactly like this you had the, the stat block here, and you had his picture, but you had this big black square right, you know, like right here that covered like two-thirds of the card. And the big reason was, and, and I've never known of any cards that didn't have the black square, because supposedly that was a sensor mark because his pants was undone. So Upper Deck, they actually pulled the card, and they replaced it with this rookie threats to include Larry Walker, who is actually a rookie in the one of the first 700, I forget what number. They replaced it with this card. They thought they had gotten them all, and that there might have been like a dozen that had made it into production. Well, a bunch of those cards, those censored Mike Witt cards, actually showed up at some flea market. And so 
there's a lot more of the Mike Wits out there. So if you get a chance of getting any of the wax packs from the the 1990 edition, and it would be, obviously this is card number 702, so it has to be the high series. If you get a chance, keep your eye out for Mike Witt, because that card is actually worth quite a bit. And Jim God. So, beautiful set. I actually got to put them back in the right order. Again, if you ever open up the wax packs, you'll be doing a lot of spinning. But it's, it's a gorgeous set, and I, another set that I opened that you had the minor errors with the, the justification. But, I, you know, if I look at the back, I'm not really seeing any... Not really seeing missing copyrights or anything. So these, these cards are usually pretty clean. Now, I did mention a sneak peek that I, uh, if you get a chance to watch to the end of this video. So what I will say is as of today on UPS, I have two unopened factory sealed boxes of the high number series wax packs. So make sure to go ahead and click the bell, click the subscribe, watch the, for the channel because I will be opening both of those boxes on a couple videos in the future. And we'll go ahead and see if we can find a Reggie Jackson. I'd love to find it. I'd love to just even be able to find the, the entire 10 card inserts because again, 1990 Upper Deck was very pivotal to those of us in the hobby because without that, you know, without Upper Deck coming up with that promotion to include autographed cards, we might not have all the autographed cards except, you know, cases like my Dale Murphy where I've actually had Dale sign it. So, again, go ahead and subscribe. And if you have any feedback, please leave it in the comments below. Thanks, everyone. Bye.